Hey everybody. So once we've completed all the steps to creating a world, the last thing we want to do before sending it to the Nowhere team is export it and make sure that our file size is small enough to be mobile acceptable and everything is optimized the best it can be. So right here, we're looking at our export folder. And as you can see, if I highlight all of the items inside of this folder, it is 54.3 megabytes, which is quite a lot. And the GLTF files are actually only 9.27 me megabytes, which is acceptable. So what we're going to try to do here is compress these textures the absolute best that we can. And in order to do that, we're going to go back into Blender. But first, we're going to rank sort these by their file size. We're going to go sort by size. Um, and we can now see the size of these different files. So it looks like we have one really big texture in here, which is a PNG image for the plate of watermelon. So let's go ahead and go back to Blender. And we're going to go look at the plate of watermelon just so we keep that in frame. And we always have the ability to see how the material looks on the mesh. But what we're going to do here is go to Texture Paint. Um, and we actually already have this one selected, which is great. So over here, we can go out of edit mode. And to our right, we see material.001 base color PNG, which is 1.2. We go back to, I'm sorry, the other folder. We go to our export folder over here. Uh, that is the file that is very large. So. What we're going to do is go ahead and click on the image button here. We're going to go resize. So let's shrink this down to a 2048 by 2048 texture to start off. So that's going to already be somewhat smaller. Now, let's go image and let's save as. And here, instead of a PNG, because there's no transparency on this, we can just make it a JPEG. And what we're going to do is go ahead and rename this just so we can have a consistent naming schema watermelon texture dot jpeg save as image we're then going to go to our shading tab make sure we have our watermelon selected we're going to go to the base color for the material a uh, 004 which we can rename watermelon material And then we're going to click this little folder icon here to open up the textures folder. And we're going to select the new watermelon texture JPEG. Now if we go back to the plate, we have a similar looking result. And our file is going to be significantly smaller. Um, so if we go back to... For some reason that didn't seem like it replaced it. So let's just go ahead and drag it in here anyways. If we just go here, go to textures, and we can drag in our watermelon text texture right here. And it seems like it's a duplicate. So that's fine. we can test if that texture is really gone by going back to our layout tab. We can go in here, we can save up, we can go to external data and automatically pack our resources. That will pack all of the textures inside the blend file. Now, if we go back to our textures folder, we can go ahead and delete these, right? So this is where our textures were being referenced, and now they're packed inside the blend. So we're going to go ahead and go delete um, and get rid of these textures. Now, if we just go file, external data, unpack resources, write files to current directory, they'll now be, uh, we're going to pack them again just so they stay in the blend, but they're going to be back in that file. If we go back to our textures, we refresh you'll see that there's only one watermelon texture in here and the second one is gone. And the one that's in here went from 12 megabytes to a half megabyte. So we already have a huge improvement in our file size. So we're going to do this for all the textures in this file that are larger than a megabyte, let's say. So let's just sort this again by the size. 
It looks like we have a 3.75, 3 megabytes, 2 megabytes, and so on. So we know that the teapot glass base color is one of our only materials in here that needs transparency, but it doesn't look like it still needs transparency because we got rid of all of the paint pieces that were on the side of the teapot, the cup, and the apple. If we go back to our textures folder, it looks like we do need the alpha on this table base color. So we're going to leave that to be a PNG, but we can definitely convert this one to a JPEG. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. Oh, it already is a JPEG. Would you look at that? It's just a large JPEG. So let's go back to our texture paint. We go over to the JPEG that we just referenced, which is teapot glass. In order to do that, I'm going to click on the teapot. We're going to go to teapot glass. And here I'm just going to go image, resize, 2048 by 2048. Okay. Image, save. Easy. So let's just do this for a few more of the images. We can check out our eggplant, the peripheral base color, and the the tomato color, the and even the banana color. So the banana color is a PNG, and we don't need it to be a PNG. Same thing for the tomato, and same thing for the skybox, and let's see, same thing for the eggplant. So let's just go ahead and one by one, we're going to change out these textures. So let's click on the eggplant. The eggplant texture is called material.002. We're going to go here, image. We're going to go resize, because this is 4K, 2048 by 2048. And then we're going to save as. We're going to change this to. Eggplant base color, make it a JPEG, save as image. Then we're going to go back to our shading tab, into our eggplant base color, open up eggplant base color.jpg, and continue on. So we're just going to go back and check how our textures are performing again and how big they are. So again, let's just go to let's save our blend. We're going to go to external data. Make sure that everything is external, or we're going to pack our resources, automatically pack them. Then we're going to go back to our textures. We're going to select them all. We're going to delete them all. We're going to file, external data, unpack resources, write files to current directory. Go back, make sure they're automatically packing. We're going to go to our folder here, our textures folder. We're going to refresh, and uh, we're going to see that we have already got an improvement on the file size of the eggplant texture. The teapot texture did not improve, so it's likely we did not link that one um, when after I compressed it. So we're going to have to do this for all of these textures. I'm going to fast forward through that, and then we'll come back once I'm done. Okay, so now we have our total texture size down to 7.5 megabytes plus our video texture on top of that. So let's go ahead and just export our file again. We'll go into our export folder and we're actually going to clear everything out except for our video text. And we're just going to go back to our plugin, click export GLTF. Save our blend. Let's open up our export folder. Give it a quick refresh. And we now have a total file size of 25 megabytes, which is pretty respectable. 
We could try to get that down a little bit more, get it beneath 20. And maybe we could do that by just compressing this video texture a bit. In order to compress the video texture, I'm just going to use an online tool, video compressor. You can use any you know, video compressor you want, but I'm going to use this one. Feel free to, to use what you'd like. So I'm going to take this texture, we're going to drop it here. We're just going to compress it. We're going to download that. We seems like we did a decent job. We're going to call it Disco Cube's video texture and just save it over the top. We're going to replace it. I don't have permission on my computer to do that for some reason. We're going to try that again. And just download it as the one after it. I'm just going to delete. Go ahead and delete. I'm going to go to my artistic foods. We're going to take this one, delete that one. Let's open the blender. That's fine. I'm going to take this. I'm going to drag it into my export folder. We can see that this is 3.85 megabytes instead of 6.83. And it looks like the, we'll check out the, uh, how much the quality degraded, but it still looks pretty good. So that's fine. We're going to delete this one. We're going to rename this one. Just get rid of the one at the end. So now we have that replaced. And our total file size now is 21.6 megabytes, which is. We could continue to go and optimize some of these textures some more, but I think we're in a good place. So we can X this out. We have our whole export folder right here. Now you would be able to send zip up this file and send it to us to upload to your own station. The only other thing to note is uh, if you did have some meshes in here that were duplicates of each other, you want to make sure they're linked to duplicates and do some other optimization methods. But for this world, I think we're as optimized as we're going to get right now. You guys can explore the world inside of nowhere. Um, there'll be a link to the space inside the guide, and there'll also be a link to download this blend file for you guys to explore on your own. Yeah, thanks for watching.